Hello, and welcome to Principles of Macroeconomics. This is Module 4.2b, and in this video, we're going to be talking about real and nominal interest rates. So if you recall from past videos and past discussions, we've talked about something called the classical dichotomy. The classical dichotomy tells us that we have a separation between nominal and real variables. When we think about nominal variables, these are variables that are quoted in monetary terms. So for example, the price of an apple is $2. The price of a banana is $1. When we think about real variables, they're quoted in relative terms or in physical units. So in other words, the price of an apple is going to be two bananas. And the price of one banana is going to be one half of an apple. So the separation between nominal and real variables is going to be an important discussion that we have throughout macroeconomics. This discussion is going to impact also what we've talked about so far in Module 4, specifically monetary policy, money supply, money demand, and interest rates. So interest rates are going to differ if we're talking about real interest rates versus nominal interest rates. The Fisher effect tells us that real interest rates are going to be equal to the difference between nominal interest rates and the inflation rate. In other words, when we have changes in inflation, we're going to have subsequent changes in the nominal interest rate to adjust in a way so that real interest rates do not respond to changes in inflation. This is going to be important when we talk about the real value of savings the real value of loans, and what happens in high inflation versus low inflation economies. So let's think about the Fisher effect in the context of an example. Again, you can always pause this video, try to work through the example yourself, and then continue on to look at the explanation. So in this example, we're thinking about two economies. One is a high inflation economy, and one is a low inflation economy. In country A, our inflation rate is 1%. In country B, the inflation rate is 10%. So country A is a low inflation economy, and country B is a high inflation economy. We want to see what impact this has on real savings and the real value of your money. So the first thing that we want to do is understand what happens if the government imposes a 20% tax on your interest income. So, First, we want to determine what is the nominal interest rate. The nominal interest rate is going to be the real interest rate plus the inflation rate. So in country A, nominal interest rates are 4%, and in country B, nominal interest rates are 13%. So if we impose a 20% tax on your interest income, what is the tax going to be? Well, for country A, we take the 4% nominal interest rate multiplied by 20% tax, and that gives us a reduction in savings of 0.8%. For country B, we take 13% times the reduction in terms of taxes of 20%, and that gives us a loss in savings of 2.6%. So what is the after-tax nominal rate? Well, we take the 4% for country A, subtract out the reduction in what we have to pay for taxes of 0.8%, and we see that our after-tax nominal rate is going to be 3.2%. We conduct the same methodology for country B, and we see that the after-tax nominal interest rate is going to be 10.4%. What is that in real terms? Well, we take the nominal rate minus the inflation rate, and we see that the after-tax real interest rate in country A is going to be 2.2%. In country B, it's going to be 0.4%. So what impact does inflation have on our real interest rates and the real value of our savings? We see that people are going to be less likely to save in country B than they are in country A we see that inflation eats away at the real value of your interest and therefore has an impact on savings. So what have we learned in this segment? We've talked about the Fisher effect and the fact that real interest rates are going to be equal to nominal interest rates minus the inflation rate. We've seen that inflation is bad for people that are trying to save money. And we see that interest rates are important when we also consider the inflation rate.
Thanks very much for joining me in segment 4.2b.